Hey guys, Holistic Hilda here. I bring you experts, experiences, and epic adventures to boost your health. I'm a certified integrative nutrition health coach, a certified fitness professional, and the host and producer of the Wise Traditions podcast. Today, I bring you a conversation with an amazing woman that I met in Australia. Her name is Holly Davis. She oversees a whole empire called Foods by Holly Davis. She's written a book called Nourish, She's written a book called Ferment. Like I just think she keeps it short and simple as you can tell from those book titles and accessible. And today we're going to talk about how you can nourish yourself deeply even if you decide not to include meat in your diet. I know there's this huge plant-based movement and even though I'm an omnivore, my heart goes out to those who are trying to make some choices for ethical reasons. So listen to what Holly has to say with her wealth of experience cooking and teaching about really deep nourishment on this episode. Check it out. Holly, you just finished telling me this wonderful philosophy that you have about eating food. Can you describe it to us again? I think um, whatever you're eating, no, mm -hmm. whatever your choices are, you're looking for to make food the, the most delicious first because you've got to, I think, want to eat what you're eating. Then have it be, offer you the most amount of nutrition possible. So how you actually prepare it so that you get the most out of it is a really important aspect. And then what was my third thing? Digestible. Digest oh, and, the, and yeah, which is really primary because I used to say you are what you eat, but I recognize now that really we are what we can digest. And if you can't digest, what you're eating, what's the point? Like you, you know, you have to be able to, or you want to be able to, to get the most out of it, and really that means digesting it. So we'll cover some of how you do these things. Yeah. As we discuss how to nourish ourselves well if we're vegans, I say we, but I'm not really a vegan. <laughs> and neither am I. <laughs> I'm an unapologetic omnivore, and yet we want everyone in this world to be as nourished as possible. So talk to us about how well, to approach this. I think as people, you know, there are many people making the choice for many different reasons mm -hmm. to be vegan. And I see it happening and I see what's being offered to them. There's now big industry around that, Absolutely. you know, how, feeding vegans. And I think that's more about money than it is about nourishing them well. So I spent a period of time as a vegan many years ago. I've not been vegan for 20, my daughter's 26, so I was pregnant at the time. and. And since I was pregnant, my body said eat meat, and so I have done that, and very happily so. <laughs> very easy to go back. She really. calls herself the vegan who eats salami. <laughs> be that as it may. I, I want that to be my, my life story title as I was the vegan who ate salami, because I'm foodie first. Yes. I want food to be delicious and and like I said to you, I want to seduce people to better ways of eating. I want <laughs> I want the food I make to be sexy and delicious and desirable. And then when you're eating it, that informs your next choice. You, oh, that was really good. I'll have a bit more of that. Or yeah. oh, I could do that. You know, like here are some plain vegetables, but I could put a very simple sauce i'm gonna have trouble naming a sauce that doesn't have butter in it but I, but, I, but i could so like like a you know using yes. a beautiful tahini sauce mm -hmm. with umeboshi with something you know that that gives it interest that also then makes it more digestible helps you to digest those fats i think that's you know that's kind of my idea yeah so i love your philosophy i think food is sexy like food is amazing it's alluring it's desirable and it's nourishing it's all these things at once so how? It, ca it can be. It can be. It need. It isn't necessary. Like bowl of cereal. Nothing sexy about a bowl of cereal. <laughs> There's nothing nutritious about a bowl of cereal. I mean, to, to, you know, like I'm talking, out of a. Out of a, you could cardboard better off box. eating the cardboard box. That kind of cereal. Like that. There's nothing sexy about that. And if you add beautiful raw milk to that, you've got something, at least something in the bowl. But really, like, don't eat that stuff. Mm. It's, so she knows her stuff. So I want you to talk to <laughs> those who have chosen to be vegans for whatever reason. What is the first thing they should do to nourish themselves well? Well, like, uh, should uh, they be eating Impossible Burgers and you know the vegan? I, I'm not sure burger. an Impossible Burgers made it here, but I have heard about it. Yeah, and and is that the thing that bleeds? Yes. Oh my god, that is just the most revolting idea. <laughs> Why would you want that if you want to be vegan? I don't. I, anyway. No. They know. They will comment below and tell us why. <laughs> but I know I, I think why not. not that? 
Or products so, like that. So I think if you want to be well over your lifetime, so, you know, you can be very well eating quite a, um, a restrictive mm -hmm. diet mm -hmm. for a short period of time. But I think uh, for longevity to be, to be well, we need to be really well nourished. And particularly if we're a young woman, which I'm not, but I was once. <laughs> And, uh, you know, to have our adrenal system well nourished. To, so I think you want to be looking for anything that you're eating to be able to say it's food, to, to know the difference between something that is food and something that's an edible food-like substance. Mm. And an impossible burger. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I haven't seen one. I don't like the sound of that. I don't like it. I mean... Yeah. I don't, well, it's, I don't want anything to be impossible that I'm eating. I just want to eat like what's what nature provides. Mm. I think. Because it's put together with all sorts of flavorings and colorings and substances that our bodies, you were talking about digestion earlier, don't even understand or know how to process because it's not real food. It's synthetic. That's right. And I say to people, you know, eat an all food diet. It's not hard. Like anybody can can determine whether something is food or it's an edible food like substance and you know reading packages is incredibly important i think if you're buying food and buying vegan food out to really know what's in it and the primary things i look for is can i recognize all the ingredients like it's you know we we sort of have we're learning that that's a really good idea to be able to and if you can recognize it, you can say your body will recognize it. And if you can't recognize it, your body won't recognize it as food and it won't be able to utilize it as food and nourish you well. Uh, that's kind of a, a primary step, I think. Right. Uh, so going with whole real foods. Going with whole real, whole real foods. Be, be a whole food vegan. If you want to be vegan, be a whole food vegan. So... If you're going to be a whole food vegan, your choice is you're going to have some level, some level of carbohydrate and legumes probably to get fully nourished in terms of protein. Like either of those individually don't provide you a whole protein with some exceptions. But, um, so those foods need to be properly pre prepared, which mm. is, that's a, a vital aspect. So if you're, you want to be vegan and you're eating out, you kind of want to know that the food groups that you're eating have been prepared to give you optimum uh, nutrition and digestibility. And with all of nature's seeds, so nuts, grain, beans and seeds, all those things have come beautifully packaged to be able to go through a digestive system unscathed so that, so that they, they could get, by an animal of course, be popped out and then grow. So that's great, nature's brilliant. And we've worked out that if we can mimic uh, uh, germination, so if we, if we use uh, moisture and warmth and time, we can have those germinate. And when they germinate, they let go of those anti-nutrient properties. Everything that's in them is then more available to yes. you. So a friend of mine says it's almost like the plant or bean or seed is fighting us and doesn't want to be eaten. That's basically what she was saying. And we need to do something to shed its defenses, if you will, so that we can access those nutrients. Yeah. I mean, isn't nature brilliant yes. that it kind of has managed to maintain life that way? It, it makes the biggest difference to your digestion, to eat foods that are properly prepared. But once you've done that, if you're going to then eat them, paying attention to how you eat. So I'd say as a vegan, your, your number one uh, ingredient for being well is to learn to chew more than you chew now. And when I, when I teach classes, I kind of say to people, so the next thing I'm gonna feed you, notice how many times do you chew before you swallow? And it is unusual for anybody to chew more than nine, Mm -hmm. 10 times, mm -hmm. you know, when they're eating something. Two is often recorded. People will say, actually, not sure I chewed at all. <laughs> and when you're eating a diet that's based on carbohydrates and legumes, those foods, the initiation of digestion is in the mouth. Absolutely. So yeah. chewing. And as Gandhi, I like that Gandhi quote, um, he said that you should uh, eat what you drink and drink what you eat. 
So mm. what that means is you should chew to the point that what you're eating has become liquid. And he suggested that you chew liquids, which I have some trouble with that. <laughs> I don't do a lot of that. But I, but I do think it, anything that's rich in carbohydrates, you want to pay more attention to how you're chewing. And the nice side benefit of that is it slows you down like it takes longer to eat you have to be in one place probably to be able to think about it mm. so you're then maybe more conscious more grateful more attentive to what you're actually consuming and there is an extraordinary um, level of enjoyment from really just being oh I want to talk about presence and <laughs> mindfulness and it's a thing right now it's, yeah. a, it's a massive thing but you know you can combine those things and make eating a personal uh, enjoyable act and I, I like to do that with other people because I'm a bit of a uh, yes I, I do too <laughs> so when we chew a lot it's like we're giving our digestive system because as you said it digestion starts in the mouth we're giving the whole body a hand as a friend of mine says the stomach doesn't have teeth so <laughs> oh, that's great <laughs> right so yeah. it really helps everything out and go through better and helps us absorb the nutrient better absolutely have you guys thought about that i hadn't really thought about it, that it you have um an enzyme and i actually i i mean i quote i quote this quite a bit and it comes from my biology class but you produce um an enzyme in the mouth called patiolin and um and that breaks breaks down carbohydrates. It, it initiates right the digestion of, of carbohydrates. So that's that's the point of, of chewing is to really assist your body. The nutrients available in those foods too, uh, it's it's not so obvious. Like if you eat them and you eat them really quickly, you, you miss out on a lot of what's available. If they're not properly prepared, mm -hmm. you, you can have some horrible consequences of badly prepared beans and badly prepared grains mm -hmm. cause horrible. Digestive distress. In, like in horrible the short term. Digestive but distress. But in the long term too, it's not doing you any favors, right? No, 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 really, really not. So uh, that's a, a, that's a simple thing. And that, that means it can be as simple as taking, um, taking your grain, your nut or your seed and soaking it in tepid water. So I like filtered water. I use filtered water for everything. So tepid filtered water, uh, with grains, I add a little something acidic so that I generally use lemon juice. I, mm -hmm. I like lemon juice. I have lemons around all the time. So generally I put lemon juice in the water and just like a little squeeze, you know, mm -hmm. half a tablespoon, like not, not a massive amount. And that's what I do with grains and I soak them overnight, mm -hmm. usually depending on the grain, some are boofier than others. <laughs> it's a technical term, boofy. <laughs> Um, I don't even know what that means, actually. <laughs> I get the idea. Tougher. Don't you? Yeah, no, kind we of, say that. No, I, I think it's... I might have made it up. i got a few made-up words. That's fine. It's totally I fine. bet you don't know what a puffdinth is either, but you could probably no, guess. No, yeah, I can guess. A puffdinth, not mine. <laughs> so the bigger, more robust. Mm -hmm. and, the, and with beans, you have more robust beans, the ones that are kind of kidney-shaped and a bit bigger. Those beans are from a particular family, and they benefit from being soaked with something alkaline. So in that water that you're soaking them in, you'd have tepid water, maybe a piece of kombu seaweed. If you haven't got that, you can put a tiny amount, like tiny, less eighth of a teaspoon of bicarb soda, mm. something to alkalize the water. Mm. That then helps them to let go of their anti-nutrient properties. But the lentils and mm -hmm. peas and the lighter uh, beans, they, they're fine in, in acidulated water so again a little lemon juice and generally for, for all of those things you then discard that water um, the next morning or when you come to cook them and then add fresh filtered water or if well I was gonna say or bone broth <laughs> well, since we're not there no, we're no, not no. talking about we're not talking about that but if, if you want to get the most out of them that's how you get the most out of them however you could then cook them with a little seaweed. So seaweed is an invaluable ingredient if you're vegan. Adds minerals, helps the um, helps in the softening process. There are sugars in the seaweed that help the, soften the beans. And the beans are difficult to digest because they have oligosaccharides, which are complex sugars uh, in, in the dried bean. And when you soak it and you add that little bit of acid, it, it 
helps your body, it helps the bean to let go of those mm. to convert them and the, um, the seaweed assists in Wonderful. that. So cooking them with a little seaweed. Yeah, oh, I've learned a little so something it's, here. It's also Thank really you. good for flavour. Oh, yeah. It's, the thing about seaweed though, like seaweed's miraculous. If you read about seaweed, um, I sometimes gather seaweed from the beach, which you can do if you know that you're not near an outfall. Um, and there are no seaweeds that are poisonous, uh, so you can cut, but some of them are inedible because they're just too tough. So having a little understanding of what's what is a good idea when YouTube that. Yes, yeah, they can Google, Google it. it. But um, the thing about those foods, and I was saying to you before, you know, I think when we find that something is really good for us, we tend to think more of that good thing will be better. Mm -hmm. And that's a, I think that's a little bit of a, a problem. So a little fermented food is really good. A little seaweed is really good, but you want very small amounts on a regular basis rather than a whole lot at once. So with seaweeds, you just need a little, a little mouthful, you know, a pinch mm -hmm. of dried seaweed is all you need. Uh, and that's very helpful in a vegan diet to, to support mineral content. And, and there is protein in some of them. Um, and seaweed, doesn't it have something really good for our thyroid in it too? Iodine. Iodine. Yeah. So in a, yes, yeah. in, in, a, in a vegan diet, you've, there are no sources of, of naturally occurring iodine other than a natural sea salt, so a, a salt from the sea that's not been uh, processed, mm -hmm. that will provide you with a small amount of iodine, and so will seaweeds. So mm -hmm. seaweeds can be quite quite high in iodine, and you only need a small amount on a regular basis, which is why you eat them regularly in little amounts. Very good. Okay, so we've covered a few different points, including having that whole real food diet, you know, looking for at least the ingredients when you're going to eat out or buy some packaged products. And mm. then also the second point, which was about digestibility. And the last thing I wanted to cover with you, Holly, was fats. Why oh, are those yeah. important in the vegan diet and which do you recommend? Well, they're important in every diet, aren't they? They're, they're, they're um, a building block for the body. They're, they're actually absolutely vital. And as a vegan, you need those. Like if you're going to eat sea vegetables and you want to get the most out of the sea vegetable, you need to have some fat with that sea vegetable because their vitamins are fat soluble. So you, may, you would soak the sea vegetable, then you'd add it some fat. And when you're looking for what fat to use, I, I'd say it's like number one. How many number ones have I said there are? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is your no, it's first one. It's, think, incre it's incredibly important that you don't eat food, um, fats that are rancid. So heat, light, and oxygen deteriorate fats. So when you buy fats, if you're buying a cold-pressed oil of some kind, you will find it usually in fairly small bottles that are dark in color mm -hmm. and you would store those generally in the fridge when you've opened them you'd store them in the fridge so if they're a polyunsaturated fat which would be any of the vegetable fats those fats are very easily denatured they're very and when they're denatured mm -hmm. so when they they become exposed to heat light and oxygen they become um, toxic and I keep, I actually have it, I don't know if you noticed, I have a bottle of oil in the sun. I know. I keep a bottle of oil in the sun so that when I teach a class, I take this and I say, this is what a rancid fat smells like, which I can't do for you, I'm afraid. But <laughs> most of us know, when you open a packet of grain or you open a packet of seeds, so I tend to buy, if you're looking for whole foods, I would try and buy from bulk stores where you can smell what you're buying or... Mm. I'm, you know, where you have those bins, I always, yes. I take one. I think, you know, if it's Just not to check. good enough to eat, it's not good enough to sell. Yeah. And, uh, and look for somewhere uh, in Australia, it's like we have speci specialized stores, but they're not so well frequented as they are in, in the States. And so you can have things sitting around for a while and you really want to know that things have been kept well you know that they they they've been um kept from from heat light and oxygen and there's a, a good tone of really makes a difference but i think a lot of us have like vegetable oil in our pantries and it doesn't smell bad or look bad and we just leave it there for months and think nothing of it 
that might be a like a bleached deodorized vegetable oil which i wouldn't count that as food that's not food so anything highly processed so the kind of foods that we're talking about as a whole food vegan you would not be using anything that's highly processed and rice bran oil and what's the cottonseed oil though and grapeseed oil those are fats that a lot of vegans are using because they are from a vegetable source and so you think oh that's great but what i say to people is if you imagine taking an olive and you press that olive if you pressed it hard enough with your fingers you probably extract some fat from it mm -hmm. but imagine what you have to do to a grapeseed or rice bran to actually be able to get any fat from it. You have to do something to it in order to extract its fats. Mm -hmm. And what people do is they heat them. So heat, light and oxygen, heat, not good. Oh. So they're heated for long periods of time. And often there are solvents used to be able to get the fats out, other, other things are added. Well, the main thing I was thinking is the oils, even if they appear okay, have been, as she said, highly processed and deodorized and so we don't detect their rancidity, but many of the oils that we think we're cooking with are already rancid. Yeah. So you were suggesting the fats that they should try that would be more of the whole real fats, uh, I think. I, yeah, I think look for, look for um, a cold pressed oil and buy in quite small quantities and don't keep it for best. So if somebody gives you a beautiful bottle of olive oil, don't stick it in a cupboard and think I'll use it next year or I'll wait for a special occasion. Use the fats that you buy mm -hmm. and use them fairly quickly. Be generous with them. They like there's nothing wrong with using, you know, decent amounts. It's actually beneficial. It help will help you get the nutrients out of it. Like a bowl of beautiful steamed greens will benefit from something that has a nice oily dressing. And isn't it true if you eat that beautiful bowl of steamed greens without fats that you can't access all the nutrients no. in those greens? No. And we uh, need those fat soluble activators to help pull them out yeah. so that your body can benefit from them. For and for uh, to get um, to make the conversion. So iron comes in a couple of forms and in animals it's called heme iron when it comes from something with blood. Um, and when it doesn't it's non heme iron and non the thing about a vegan diet which is why you really want to pay attention is it's not uh, it's not a given that you can make the conversion so uh, it's harder for you to get a iron it's in the food but for your body to actually be able to utilize it you need other factors there are cofactors that are important and with iron it's vitamin C so eating greens with some lemon juice, with a, a lemon dressing or a citrus dressing of some kind. That's a really, you know, th those, the things, I, I like the idea that things that grow together, go together. Ah. And if you kind of imagine what you're eating, where it comes from, what's natural and think in terms of um, acid, you, you want you know, to make a balanced, delicious meal. You want a level of salt from somewhere, a level of acid from somewhere, and you want the flavor of the food itself to, to be primary, I think. You know, I want that bowl of greens to taste like a bowl of greens, um, but with a, a little highlight here or there. And fermented foods are excellent for that because they also then assist you to digest those and they give you the benefit of, of their probiotic effect if they're live and raw and I like wild fermented that's my thing oh my gosh well there is so much more to cover with Holly but I think we have to <laughs> say goodbye to you right now Holly thank you so much and let's go have some of those amazing greens you were talking about let's and thank you so much for having me my pleasure <laughs> bye thanks for watching you guys don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing and click on the notification bell so you can be alerted every time I upload a new video also comment below and tell me what you thought of this particular post and what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks and I'll talk to you soon.